Hello, and welcome back to A Swift Look. I'm Zoe Jewell, and today we have a very big show because Travis Kelsey is out here talking about our girl Taylor Swift, sharing details, information, not too much, obviously, and we just, we have to talk about it. So if you missed it, Travis did a number of interviews that came out yesterday in honor of the announcement that his music festival, Kelsey Jam, will be returning for a second year in just a few short weeks in Kansas City. And this guy was out here doing interviews with The Hollywood Reporter, Entertainment Tonight, People Magazine. And as to be expected, they asked a lot about Taylor Swift. And boy, did he deliver. So let's take it back to the start. As I mentioned, Travis announced his lineup for Kelsey Jam, which is his music festival that he does. Um, And here are the artists that he will have at his show this year. Lil Wayne, Diplo, 2 Chains are like the big headliners. There's going to be other people. Um, The music festival takes place on May 18th in Kansas City. So if you want to go to this festival, if you live in the Kansas City area or something you're interested in, You can go to KelseyJam.com for tickets and information and all that stuff. I doubt Taylor Swift will be there. I think it's also the same weekend that she has shows um, because she'll be back on her Eras tour. So don't go thinking you're going to see Taylor Swift because you probably won't. But if you want to see Travis Kelsey, if you like those artists, give it a shot. Go. Um, so yeah, as I mentioned, in, in in honor of this announcement and wanting to kind of promote it and get it out there, Travis did a few different interviews. And I just have to say, before we get into all of this, I love how seemingly unafraid Travis Kelsey is to put himself on camera with an interviewer to just kind of like, he he has to know that when he goes into these types of situations, they're going to ask about Taylor Swift. And this guy just seems completely unfazed. I don't know if he has like, I don't know if his publicist or anybody says beforehand to these interviewers like, hey, lay off the Taylor Swift questions or don't ask too much about Taylor Swift. It doesn't seem like they do because whenever those questions get brought up, he just handles it so well. So I just have to give him props before we get into what he said because he just, he always kills it. Um, But starting off with an interview he did with The Hollywood Reporter, they asked him, because he's been now to a handful of Taylor's Eras tour shows, they asked him if he has learned anything about putting on a major music event by watching Taylor and by seeing the Eras tour. And this is what he said, quote, I did. Don't try and be Taylor. That's what I learned. Yeah, she's on a whole other stratosphere. She's the best at what she does for a reason. It's because she's so articulate and just very dialed into every single thing that she does. And that's the, and that's the beauty of it. I'd be silly if I ever tried to take anything from what she does other than just enjoy the people that show up. I think that's one thing I could probably take away. She really relates to the people she's performing in front of. And so I'll take that. Excellent quote. Excellent quote. I mean, for a guy who I think a lot of people make fun of for like maybe not being the best with words, and he even says, he's like, I'm not the most articulate person in the world. He he always delivers the best answers. He always just knows how to handle these situations so well. And he does it in a way that always is like uplifting Taylor, like always I don't know. It's just, he's just, just a master at it. I love it. I love that answer. Perfect. Travis, perfect. Um, And then in a different interview he did with Entertainment Tonight, Travis talked about how in relation to like Kelsey Jam and picking the artists for his event, how it's been fun to kind of like, I don't know, take some pointers from Taylor and like her taste in music. And this is what he said, quote, it's definitely been fun to experience her taste in music for sure. She's so amazing at what she does and to find that creativity, to see where she likes to pull things from and just really how she listens to music is very eye opening to me. It's been fun to hear her take on it. Again, another just great quote. And I, I, I shouldn't be shocked because he's been doing this He's been doing this the entire time that he's been dating Taylor Swift. He's he's really has yet to put a foot wrong, knock on wood. He just always answers it with, I don't know. He's just so good at it every single time. And then they asked him about like his game day playlist and like what kind of songs he has on his, what or what kind of songs he like listens to. And I think they made some mention of the fact that he didn't say Taylor Swift on his game day, that he doesn't, he doesn't listen to her on his game day. And he said, quote, that's my everyday playlist, not just my game day. 
Again, another excellent quote. Like this man just knows how to operate in this world. He just gets it. Um, And I know a lot of people on the internet were comparing this specific quote of like, that's my everyday playlist to one Mr. Joe Alwyn's um, answer when he was asked what his favorite Taylor Swift song was back in the day. And he was like, I'm not even going to get into that. Or like, I don't even want to get into that world. Like he's always, he was, he was never interested in like playing along and revealing any of his thoughts or feelings about Taylor Swift. And so people were juxtaposing like Travis, who's just, again, not afraid to give her praise and to talk about her to Joe, who clearly just didn't want to get into that world. And I have to, I have to imagine that for Taylor, like this is so refreshing to have somebody who's just, who's just not afraid of it because it's going to happen regard, like anyone who dates Taylor Swift is going to have attention on them, no matter what, whether they want it or they don't want it. And so it's probably better for her and everybody involved that she's with somebody who, who enjoys it or, or who doesn't mind having that kind of attention because it's going to happen one way or, or the other. So props to, prop, props to Travis. He's been, he's been great. Um, then he did another interview with People Magazine and they asked him, you know, about life right now. Cause life for Travis Kelsey is crazy. Winning the Super Bowl, dating Taylor Swift, going on all these different trips and going here and there. And his, his, his like star is just skyrocketing. And Travis revealed that he is the happiest he has ever been. He said, quote, I'm the happiest I've ever been. I'm a guy that some people say is is glass half full, half empty, and my glass is all the way full. I mean, this guy's just living life right now. He is not afraid. He is happy as a clam, and I love it. Um, they did ask him if he was going to be going to the Eras tour in Europe, and he said, of course, because of course he's going to. And he specifically mentioned London and Paris as being like the the, the places he's most excited to go. And um, he said, I think she's at Wembley eight times, which is mind blowing that she can do that many shows in one stadium and fill that thing up. I've said this, I think, on a previous video that I really feel like London specifically, but Europe as a whole, there's going to be a lot of like Travis's friends and like probably also Taylor friends too. But I could see a lot of like, like I could see Patrick Mahomes going over and seeing an Eras tour show from London. I could see Jason Kelsey and the family going. I could see other Chiefs teammates making the trek over across the pond. I'm sure a lot of Taylor's friends. I mean, it's going to be summertime. Everyone seems to go, especially like rich, famous people go to Europe in the summer. So I just think those VIP tents are going to be jam-packed pretty much every single show with various people. And we're going to cover it all here on this channel. So if you aren't subscribed, subscribe so that you can, you know, we can talk about every single detail that happens over the next handful of months because it's going to be, it's going to be jam-packed. Um, we also found out, so that was, that, that was kind of that from the Travis interview stuff. But again, like just keep doing what you're doing, Travis, you're doing fantastic and you're doing great. Um, we also, there was a report that came out that said that Travis and Taylor are going to be going to Coachella, which is in, I think the first weekend is next weekend. Obviously there's two weekends of Coachella, but according to us weekly, they will be attending, um, specifically because they want to see a couple of their friends performing. Lana Del Rey is performing at Coachella this year. Jack Antonoff's band, who obviously is Taylor's like closest collaborator, his band's performing at Coachella. So makes sense. They want to go see see those people. Um, and I feel like Coachella, it's a celebrity hotspot. Lots of famous people go there. So they could they can do it in a way that's like still pretty private and they won't get like mobbed and attacked. Um, so I guess we'll have to stay tuned for that. And I'm assuming they'd go the first weekend in April or like the first weekend of Coachella because I think the next weekend is the Taylor uh, album release weekend. So stay tuned for that. Um, and then the last piece of news that came out yesterday is that Taylor Swift is officially a billionaire. I think we already kind of knew this, but Forbes came out with an article um, that said that, yes, Taylor is officially a billionaire. She's one of 14 celebrities to make the list. And I was just going to quickly actually run through those celebrities because um, kind of kind of interesting to see who made the list. So Taylor is at 14. Her net worth is 1.1 billion. 
Dick Wolf, who's the mastermind behind all those crime shows, Law and Order, all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> 1.2 billion. At number 12 is Magic Johnson. 1.2 billion. 11, LeBron James. 1.2 billion. 10 is Tiger Woods. 1.3 billion. 9 is Rihanna. 1.4 billion. 8 is Tyler Perry. 1.4 billion. 7 is Peter Jackson. 1.5 billion. 6, Kim Kardashian. I mean, Kim Kardashian, she has done well for herself. 1.7 billion. Jay-Z's at five with 2.5 billion. Four is Oprah, 2.8 billion. Three is Michael Jordan, 3.2 billion. Two, Steven Spielberg, 4.8 billion. And number one, George Lucas, 5.5 billion dollars. I guess when you make Star Wars, you're going to be set for life because that thing just keeps on keeping on. So yeah, Taylor made it on the list. Um, again, not shocking considering the fact that she's the biggest pop artist in the world. Her tour was the biggest thing ever. Um, it's interesting though, because she doesn't, at least from my perspective, like she doesn't have all these other artists or all, all, all these, all these other celebrities seem to have like um, big endorsement deals or they have these like massive businesses. I think of like Kim Kardashian um, with Skims or um, Rihanna with Fenty Beauty or George Lucas with Star Wars. Um, but it seems like, you know, Taylor is really, has, has really made this money solely based off of her songwriting and her music. Like that's pretty rare. Um, because again, most of these other people have had to do it through like their business ventures and whatnot. So congratulations to Taylor. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's it for today's show. Please let me know in the comments, your thoughts on everything we covered, the Travis interviews, the Europe shows, Coachella, everything under the sun. Please share them with us in the comments. Again, make sure to subscribe to our channel, follow us on social media, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.